Box Slam, where I get on my soapbox and I slam things that I see going on around the world, in your community, uh, locally, nationally, whatever it may be. Uh, today I want to slam the automobile industry. And particularly, I would like to slam the uh, mid-size, large pickup truck uh, manufacturing uh, automobile industry. Uh, there's many facets to the automobile industry that uh, one could, could talk about and spend an entire hour plus talking about it. For example, we could talk about EV vehicles, which I did a post about electrical cars and their price point and them being counterproductive in um, American society, uh, which I have a very strong feeling against uh, uh, electrical vehicles. And ironically, uh, I just read in the newspaper USA Today that um, the automobile, the American automobile industries, that being Ford, uh, GM, and uh, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram, uh, have decided to pull back, particularly Ford, excuse me, pull back on um, their electric vehicle production. In fact, they're they're stopping the production of a battery plant in uh, Michigan um, because they want to rethink and readdress uh, the EV electrical vehicle demand. But this, 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 uh, me on my soapbox today isn't about that. That's just one example, one facet of the automobile industry that one could talk about. There are many different other ones. Um, but just going off of that, uh, the only, the most interesting automo, the, the most interesting thing that I read in USA Today about the automobile industry, particularly. Um, in reference to the electrical vehicle um, uh, push was that Toyota took a different approach. And I think Toyota um, actually has the right idea. Um, I think that it is counterproductive and way overpriced, the electrical vehicle that is, um, counterproductive and way overpriced. And what I read is that uh, the, the Toyota company decided that they would expand their hybrid um, um, production. And I think the hybrid production is actually the right, the right way to go. Um, you know, it just makes the use of um, fuel consumption, that being diesel or, or gasoline, um, expand longer so that the, the, you get more miles per gallon and you have to use less gallons. Um, and that's the whole hybrid idea. Um, it's, a, it's a crossover between gasoline and some other fuel source, that being electricity or something else. Way to go, Toyota. But this, this slam, this soapbox, me on my soapbox today, isn't about the EV industry. I do not support the electrical vehicle. I think that if, uh, I, I think that there's a lot more going on that meets the eye when it comes to the electrical vehicle. And I think that, um, that, that again, I did a post about it and I would post about it again. Um, but I do not support the idea of the electrical vehicle, especially at the price point that it is. If you wanna be a capitalist American, um, then you would want um, the electrical vehicle to enter the market at an extremely low price so that it could out-compete with the combustible combustible engine. And people would, want, would end up with both an electrical vehicle and a combustible engine vehicle. And they would have both and eventually wean itself off of the um, combustible engine and uh, rely on their electrical vehicles, but no, they've they've entered the electrical vehicle market high as can be, 
almost higher than the majority of uh, gas engines and then expect everybody to go in and buy an electrical vehicle. But again, this post isn't about um, the EV market. That's just one segment of the automobile industry. As I stated earlier, um, I'm on my soapbox about the heavy duty, light duty truck market. And um, I've owned a pickup truck now for about roughly um, 10 years. I use it for, for work, the kind of work that I do. Um, I tend to need a pickup truck because um, I don't work in city environments. I work out in, in country fields and, and things like that, uh, hilly, rocky kind of places. And um, I need a, a vehicle that is capable of off-roading. Um, I have not owned a Ford truck yet, but I have owned a Dodge truck and a GM, excuse me, a GM truck. And um, thus far, and I don't have a full comparison. I mean, you've got the Dodge trucks, you got the Ford trucks, you have the GM truck, you have Toyota trucks, and you have. I mean, that's the majority of the market when it comes to the pickup truck industry. Um, and first of all, the majority of pickup trucks, especially, um, you can get a very simple pickup truck. Uh, it's not even four wheel drive, maybe two wheel drive or something like that. And it's gonna cost you about $45,000, right? Uh, it might not be a crew cab. It'll probably be a single cab which means it's just the bench up front, so you and one person to the side. It has a longer bed, um, but that's it. And that's gonna run you about $45,000. Um, then you're gonna jump about another $10,000 to about $55,000 for a pickup truck that has a front and then a half a back to a crew cab. It may or may not have four wheel drive again. Um, and then, um, and I say 55, but you're probably gonna jump that closer to 60 um, for the, for the, for the one, one step up, right? And, and I say 45 for the, for the entry level, light duty, single cab truck, but all in, you're more looking at high 40s, 48, something like that, might be closer to 50 next size up is going to be closer to 60 but to guarantee that you're going to get a pickup truck that um, has four-wheel drive has a back seat um, double or crew cab but also has all of the off-roading capability which when you need off-roading capability there's certain suspensions that you need there's, uh, I highly recommend having a skid plate underneath there because you're going over terrain and you don't need anything scratching your engine or radiator or com engine components underneath. So you kind of need a plate underneath. So there, there's certain details that you need when you are uh, working in a certain industry off-roading, even for farmers, um, there would be a certain um, level of details that you would need um, to ensure the safety of your vehicle. And to, to, to get that kind of vehicle, you're looking at $70,000 today. And I mean, $70,000 for a vehicle is outrageous. Now, um, the automobile industry just suffered its, own, um, its strike from the, uh, auto, the auto union um, workers. And a lot of people were upset with the fact that, oh, the unions are striking, they want more money. Uh, how greedy, selfish of the union to those workers to want more money. And here's the biggest conundrum, right? In part, um, yes, the, the automobile industries are exceptionally profitable. And when you have an extremely profitable corporation, where the majority of the profits are rewarded to the CEOs and the, the management uh, of the board of directors and stockholders, but yet the workers don't receive um, 
a decent living wage or a wage that puts them in the middle middle or upper middle class um, of society well then you know it, it becomes a, a contentious issue because you know you as a worker are like wait why do I have to pay you know three quarters of my salary for this vehicle that I built and I you know so I'm building this vehicle and I can't even barely afford the vehicle that I'm building but yet people who aren't lifting a finger and manage to be blessed with a little bit of capital to invest in stock are receiving dividends and payments that are larger than what a worker makes. Now I'm, I'm slightly exaggerating about the dividends that are received, but in essence, you know, a person has the potential to make a lot of money and not work as hard as an auto worker might work. And so people get frustrated with the unions for striking. I don't blame it, but the conundrum, I don't blame the union for striking. In fact, I endorse and I'm glad that the unions want a bigger piece of the pie, as they should. And the corporations, the car companies, should want their employees, their auto workers, to have a much bigger piece of the pie. They, they should want them to be um, in the upper middle class uh, and, and be able to afford their, the, the trucks that they're building. That's what, I mean, that's what the CEOs would want. I mean, the original concept of, of Ford's Model T um, assembly line manufacturing um, was it was imperative that his employees be able to afford a Model T. He wanted that, like that was a really big deal to him, um, to, to Henry Ford um, and the Ford company. So, you know, somewhere in, 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 in a matter of time, this concept of um, the worker being able to afford um, the products that they're building and manufacturing um, somewhere in our society um, owners have lost that desire for their workers to be able to afford the products that they're making and afford a living but that's another subject the point in the conundrum here is and, and, and again whether you like unions or not and everything else the biggest issue and the reason why it's such a battle and a struggle is it's a problem with the banks see the moment you started getting into a point where banks people could finance and and borrow an, an, an absorbent amount of money in order to pay something off over a period of time this idea of this credit what this did is it made the banks wealthier but what it did is it allowed for the prices of goods and products to be inflated so that people can finance, thus owing the banks and the banks reaping the most benefit from the money because they're making money off the interest. I mean, in, 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 in most cases, you're paying twice. Whatever the list price of that vehicle is, you essentially are gonna double it or, or at least increase it by half so if it's forty thousand dollars by the time you're done financing it over the course of six years or eight years or whatever else you would have paid sixty to seventy thousand dollars for something that you borrowed forty thousand dollars for and so you paid for it twice just because of financing so what the banks have done is they've they by infiltrating the market they have allowed the corporations and companies and manufacturers to inflate the prices of things and they inflated the prices of things in order for the public to be able to finance and the public by financing the bank makes a month about as much or a third of what the actual um, price of the product is so the, where, where people are looking at okay uh, I want to buy a new pickup truck and the kind of pickup truck that I need um, for work cost me $75,000. And I, I don't, I mean, I make decent money, but uh, I don't have $75,000 or, or, you know, uh, $40,000 to put down on a vehicle. Um, and so now I have to finance the difference and borrow money and pay interest on the borrowed money um, to buy that vehicle. So by the, and that's the, the case of the majority of people out there. Um, 
they're gonna finance and they're gonna finance a good portion of um, of the cost of that vehicle. And so the banks make a third of the money or almost half the money of what the actual manufacturing price is. And like I said, the, the banks infiltrating the goods and services and manufacturing industry has caused the price of, has caused corporations and manufacturers to be able to, to list the price at a higher, at a much higher rate so that, and then the banks come in and finance people for the difference so that more money can be made. But keep in mind, it's not just the, <coughs> it's not just the corporation that makes more money. The banks are making more money. I, and, and, and thus, in the end, the American consumer and the American citizen is no longer profitable because they're on the hook forever to finance something that they do need. Um, whether it's vehicles, uh, they do this with, um, um, uh, they do this with, with uh, um, furniture. And, and the crazy thing about all of these things is, you know, people wanna blame the labor cost, right? I mean, th this concept that it's the labor cost that's causing the price of everything to go up, th you know, that is a scapegoat. It's not the labor cost. And you can't tell me that it costs, it is way cheaper, even if you were paying somebody in China $2 an hour to manufacture something, you still have to ship that product all the way from China back to the United States, pay all the tariffs on it, and everything else, you cannot tell me that that is, is, is significantly um, cheaper, right? You know, the, the whole concept of, oh, uh, uh, steel, all the, all, the, all the resources that is required to make a product, right? We, we moved away from steel to, to fiberglass or aluminum because it's cheaper. Well, if it was cheaper to use aluminum as opposed, or fiberglass as opposed to a steel body, then why did the price of the product go up? We use cheaper goods, cheaper raw materials to make it, but the price of the product went up. Like these things don't don't make sense. And a lot of people drink the drink the Kool Aid and, and and regurgitate. Oh, it's the labor cost and and this and that. And 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 I I beg to differ. I think people need to be a little more um, uh, a, a a little more. Um, investigative about what's really and, and think through about what's really causing these these these, these price influxes and, and, and price increases so back you know let me re, re, get focused back on on these trucks right so now i've tried to explain how it is that the the prices of the trucks have increased right the the fact that the banks have now infiltrated in the market and because they're infiltrated in the market and willing to finance people the companies are allowed to raise the price of, of the vehicle. I mean, and 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 so thus, you know, workers, the auto worker and the auto union is like, hey, y'all making a lot of money off of this. Everybody's making a lot of money except for the people who are actually building this. I, I want a cut, right? Everybody wants their cut, and I don't blame them. Get a cut. <coughs> Get a cut, right? Um, you know, I I I think that anybody who who it gets angry with the unions or worth workers who are demanding more money, um, you know, good, uh, you know, this is, our, that's capitalism. More money, more money, more money. They're just being capitalist, right? Make more money, get demand more money, whatever else, right? So, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. I mean, the, the double standards in people's minds, um, when it serves them, it's great. But if how dare anybody else expect the same kind of uh, uh, um, the same the same thing? And and all of a sudden they're offended. I mean, I, I kind of want to smack the shit out of people when they, they they say shit like that and they do shit like that. I mean, their their own hypocrisy sometimes. You know, I I, some, I swear to God, I wish I could backhand or open palms bitch slap. And I hate to say that word bitch slap because I, I don't mean it as derogatory towards women. Open hand, backhand or open hand smack or even close hand 
punch the crap out of a lot of people out here who are real full on double standard hypocritical people and you know um but anyway so i i, I digress let me get back to the topic like so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to topic here and we're talking about our heavy duty and light duty trucks. Um, so I, I, I wanna get back to this because um, I, I tried to explain the cost and how we got the cost so high. I tried to explain the manufacturing and, and workers and them wanting a bigger piece of the pie. I started to touch on the, the issues of, of, of resources and goods and raw materials used to build these trucks, right? So I've only owned two out of the four major truck manufacturers, um, but I have to ad acknowledge and admit that I haven't owned a Ford yet, and I and and I will. My, maybe that'll be the next one that I that I own a Ford truck. But thus far, I've had a, a, a Ram truck, and I've had a uh, a GMC truck, and between a Ram and a GMC truck. I will have to honestly say that my GMC truck was better. As far as interior, body size, comfort, ride, my GMC was better. I mean, I paid the same amount of money for the same, essentially the same vehicle. In fact, actually, um, I'm get, I have gotten a lot less features on my Ram than I did on my GMC truck, okay? Um, and I, what I mean by less features is um, <clears throat> I had to forego when I bought my Ram, I had to forego my skid plate underneath, right? I had to forego, um, you know, some other um, safety features um, for my Ram that I, um, that I had on my GMC that I don't have on my Ram, right? So with my GMC, uh, so none of these trucks, right? None of these trucks, Ford Tough, professional grade, um, built, you know, built, built sturdy, whatever, all these things, right? These quotes that they market and advertise everybody, uh, advertise to everybody, right? About these trucks. First of all, the trucking industry, the light duty trucks and all that other stuff, none of them are gonna last more than 150 to 170,000 miles. Now, um, yes, there are people out there who, who have um, trucks that have lasted for 200,000 miles, 250,000 miles. Those are outliers, right? You know, you look at a bell curve, you have the low end and the high end and the two on the outside, those are your outliers, right? So I, I'm not talking to you people. So. You know, you can call, you can you can respond and say, oh, my truck lasted, da 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 I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about the majority, right? The, the medium, what's in the middle, the majority of trucks that are out there. That's what I'm talking about here. So there's no need to, to, to get your panties in a bunch about a general statement. The general statement here is that the majority of these trucks are not going to last more than 150 to 175,000 miles. It, 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 baffles me and I, I find it so funny that they advertise these trucks and, and, and uh, the, the working man's truck and everything else but the truck doesn't last that long I mean I average and the majority of people I work with average about 30,000 miles a year on their vehicle so right off the bat they're buying a vehicle and it's not going to last more than five years period if you're averaging 30 to 35,000 miles a year on a vehicle and you're only getting 150,000 miles out of your vehicle, that's all you're gonna get out of it. You guys want me to go to electric and you guys want me to worry about my carbon footprint, but you won't build products like vehicles that last more than five years. There's something wrong with that. You wanna shake your finger at me about my carbon footprint but yet these corporations keep making products that will break down and you need to replace in five years so that they can make more money. And that's a, a, a concept that I just, I can't co-sign on. I mean, I'm not trying to co-sign that, right? Like build me a truck. You want me to worry about an EV car? You want me to worry about my carbon foot, footprint? 
then build me a motherfucking truck that lasts for 15 years. Straight up. Build that for me. Build that. And then I'll start worrying about my carbon footprint and what I'm doing. All right? Do not start shaking your finger at me while you turning around doing the exact opposite. Hypocrite. You need to get bitch slapped for that. And that's the truth. And I, I mean, backhanded, whatever, that's what you need for that. I, and, and all these people out here, especially a lot of whatevers, y'all over here thumping about your green carbon footprint, stop. Like, stop. I agree, I love the environment. I'm not, I mean, God's will was that we take care of our environment. I agree with that. I, I, I'm not against that at all. What I'm against is you trying to tell me how I need to live my life, but yet the corporations and all these other people are not, are not doing the same thing. And that to me is a problem. So, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, so anyways, these light duty trucks, my GMC ran much better, but the engine was horrible. I've had to replace pistons, lifters, push rods three times. I spent over twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 trying to keep my GMC running in the five years that I owned it. Now they say that uh, the, the, the Ram engine is really good, um, but the doors are hollow, it, it rattles. It feels cheap inside. The only, the nicest thing about my Ram is that I've got a, a huge screen, a beautiful, huge uh, um, screen inside, right? right? You know, I mean, that, that's really great, but the doors rattle, they feel hollow. You shut the door and it feels hollow inside. I mean, it, it, it just doesn't, it does not feel sturdy, strong. Um, it just doesn't feel that way at all. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it feels cheap. It just feels cheap. The, the undercarriage, um, you know, I look at the, the muffler and all the other stuff. And yeah, it may be made by the same material that GM stuff is made out of, but it just looks and feels cheaper. Um, you know, but you know, my GMC, the interior, the doors, they never felt hollow. You didn't, you know, when you shut the doors, it didn't feel like you could feel the air and, and it was weak or, you know, it didn't feel that way, right? Not at all. So, you know, all of these materials that are so so-called cheaper to use, but yet the prices of all of these things, they're, they're, they were priced at about the exact same, same cost. My GMC was actually a little bit cheaper and it had a lot more features to it as far as being a sturdier truck, the undercarriage, um, shocks, speaker system, sound, all that other stuff, right? Um, so, you know, it, 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 it baffles me that, um, you know, again, that I'm spending this money for a vehicle that doesn't last, um, you know, that is advertised and marketed to be the working man's vehicle, um, that, that they're professional grade and Ford Tough and all this other stuff, but it's quite the opposite. And, and so therefore, you know, I don't blame the unions for wanting a bigger piece of the pie. Again, the conundrum goes back to the fact that the reason why the cost of all these things are so much higher is because the banks have infiltrated the industry and allowed and financed the products so that the products can price can be raised. If you took the banks out of it and they were not financing people to buy these things, then it, and it was based on the absolute dollars that people had in order to buy, well then the absolute cost would go down. It would be, it would absolutely go down because people would not be able to finance for it. They wouldn't be able to put it on credit. They would have, in order to buy it, they would have to have the money for it. And so then the price will go down. But what that would do to the economy and where everybody gets their panties in a bunch, and I say everybody, that being the greedy wealthy people, the greedy corporations, the greedy uh, politicians, is what that do is, what that would do is that would slow down the consumption of vehicles. People would not be buying as much 
because they don't have the credit. There's no credit f to buy it. So there's not any, there, we wouldn't be trashing and consuming and buying and recycling the shit that we buy over and over again to replace it breaking down. What we would do is we would slow down the profits that people would make because they wouldn't have to buy things and they couldn't afford to buy things and they wouldn't be financing to buy it. So the idea here is that if you took the banks out of the equation and we're not financing these things, then the cost of these products would go down because people would have to have real cash to buy them. And if the cost of these products would go down and people had to have real cash to buy these things, then you're not gonna sell as much. And if you're not selling as much, then that means there's not as much profit to be made by CEOs and the stockholders. And since there's not as much profit and they're so greedy, they, they can't handle that part. So they do not want to do that. That is the cycle. Um, and it's a problem. Uh, you know, my solution to the problem is get the banks out. Uh, the banks are the worst enemies to the United States of America and to our economy um, because what all the banks are doing is allowing things, prices to go up so that things can be financed. It, you can look at this in, in the, the, the automobile industry, but you finance furniture. I mean, furniture is, is the biggest joke because it's not even made with real wood. It's particle board which is basically recycled compressed wood that is pressured into to glued together and then sold and then sold at, and then they put a shellac on it, veneer, shellac, some sort of shellac, veneer, and then they wanna charge an arm and a leg for that and finance it. And guess what? Your furniture doesn't last that long. It's a nasty cycle. And I wish more and more people would, would, would see the cycle and abandon using the banks and, and, and everything else. So that's me on my soapbox about the vehicles, um, the trucking industry, the, the light duty trucks, heavy duty trucks. Um, I, I, again, um, my wrap up is that, you know, they're not worth the cost that it costs to buy them. And then the reason why they are the price that they are is because the banks have infiltrated the industry. These vehicles don't last and are not capable of doing what they're supposed to be doing, whether you're a farmer or you work in an industry where you need an off-road off vehicle. Um, these vehicles are not built that way. They're built to look, look cool or whatever else, but they're not built for function. And as a working man, I need a vehicle that is able to function. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the final thought here is that how do you solve the problem? biggest the biggest the number one to me the number one answer to solving this problem is getting the banks out of the equation you get the banks out of the equation you're not able to finance for these vehicles anymore when you're not able to finance for these vehicles anymore um, you have to pay, you have to have the real money for it then the price of the product goes down simple so it's, it's supply and demand right um, the demand would go down the supply would go up man going down because people can't afford it without financing it so you would get a huge supply of it once you got a huge supply of the product then the prices would go down so that you could get rid of some of the supply and increase the demand and once that happened then you know you would you would get a true a true cost um, and that's what should be done so that's me and my soapbox about the trucks um, I'll ride this. I'll ride this ride out. My my, my Ram right now. Um, I'll ride it for as long as it lasts. I'm not going to spend a lot of money like I did on my GMC to try and keep it running. Um, but and and the next I'll, I'll, I'll the next one will be a Ford. Um, in my working career, maybe I'll try all of them and then um, and then after that, I'll report back to you guys which one was the best vehicle to, to ever have. Um, that'll be a soapbox lamb for the future, right? Um, but that's my soapbox. You guys have a wonderful day. I'm very festive. We're getting closer and closer to Christmas, one of my favorite holidays. So having said that, please be kind, be happy, um, and have a fantastic day.